Good evening. Welcome to a special edition of the International Grapevine. This is your host, Wallen Lee. Tonight on the Grapevine, we want to put the spotlight in Lehman Center of Performing Arts. We've been there a couple of times to do various interviews with the executive director, and we've worked with her in the past. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the center. As everyone knows, because now because of the COVID-19, a lot of places was closed, and Lehman Center was one. Well, now, they have opened up back again. So for us, it's a big welcome. The Human Center has been a real great institution, not only in the Bronx, but uh, bringing artists from all over the place. And one of the reasons that that was done is because of the keen observation of the executive director, Eva Bernstein, who has been so kind and very knowledgeable to know how to move around. She brought a lot of great artists there and we would have the opportunity today on the grapevine to speak to her in terms of what happened when it was closed, how long it took to open, and it shows them that are forthcoming, which are going to be very excited. So it's given us a great deal of pleasure and, of course, satisfaction to have her on our program. Eva, welcome to our program. It's great to see you again. Yes, wonderful to see you as well. I love that painting in the background. Beautiful. Thank you. That was to get your attention. <laughs> It's beautiful. Well, I wish I had you. it in my, <clears throat> in my condo. Maybe we might arrange that. You never can tell. All I have is little flowers. Oh, flowers is beautiful, though. We wanted to talk a little bit because we know the center was closed for a while and how much it affected the Bronx because um, you, you put on such a great shows all the time. Uh, can you tell us how long the center was, was closed? Well, you know, let's back up a little bit. In the sure. fall of uh, the COVID year, uh, we had a big reopening of the center because we spent over $15 million to upgrade the seats. We put brand new seats. Uh, we put a beautiful new lobby, new bathrooms. So we spent a lot of money making the center truly beautiful and updated. And then that was the fall. And then March, as you know, all the venues closed. It's funny because we had group Nietzsche on March 7th and Great it group. was a full house, you know, and nobody knew at that time that there was like virus going around. It was just the beginning of the awareness in the country. So when I look back, you know, it really scares me that we like over 2,000 people in the concert hall in March. And then, of course, you know, big announcement, everything closed. So my colleagues and I, you know, being an administrator of an arts facility, you have to be connected with other people, you know, people such as you, my colleagues. So we, of course, you know, went on Zooms and form coalitions. And one of these coalitions was a group called NIVA, N-I-V-A. And it was an association of all the performing arts centers across the country. And it was a fantastic group because these were my colleagues from different parts of the country including Manhattan, of course, you know, Lincoln Center was part of it, Carnegie Hall, and numerous other centers, Apollo Theater, etc. And we started talking, you know, what is our future? Because, you know, we immediately went to Zoom, but everybody got tired of sitting at the computer watching events. We were 
craving live events. And of course, most of us, majority of us lost all the funding. So in, in case of Lehman Center, we lost 90% of earned income. So we form a, formed a coalition and fortunately one senator who was instrumental in assisting us was Senator Schumer. He was really a fantastic godfather to our organization. He persuaded the Senate to come up with a grant called SVOG, Save the Stages, basically, you know, in all of the country. It was a federal grant. And it was a difficult grant because it was a new one. So everybody had to learn, you know, how to do it. And it required a lot of paperwork, a lot of documents. But I must tell you, we are one of the very few centers across the country that got selected to receive this grant. Without this grant, it would be impossible to reopen the center. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're opening the center, you need your marketing, you know, you need to have money to print brochures, you need to put down payment on all the performance fees. I mean, you're talking hundreds and thousands of dollars to open a center. And we've lost everything. We've wow. lost our, you know, we lost every penny we had. So I must say that Senator Schumer was our angel in this case. I, I must agree that the grant was a real savior for Lehman Center. It came in at the right moment. If not, it could have really just destroy everything no question about it exactly and you know so we reopened and we are the only cuny you know you are part of cuny which is city university of new york we are yeah. the only performing art center that is reopened right now within the cuny system wow well it's good this to be open because i know it was closed for a very long time yeah, it's great, great that it's open because I mean it was closed for a long time. I think the last act that you had there before it was was closed was Grupo Nietzsche. In my memory, right. I remember. March seventh. Yeah, okay. that was the last yeah. act. So we were closed like for eighteen months or more. You know, that's a long time for people to so. remember the center. Even you know, people kind of got into their own way. You know, sitting at home watching everything on screen and we were dreaming that we will be able to bring all the audiences back to that magical you know setting where people can socialize when people can say hello to each other you know and 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 see live performance well, well practically Prior, prior to closing, you guys did a great job, though. I expanded it. You fix, uh, you you expanded the place and stuff like that. You put a lot of money into the place to uplift it and stuff like that. How, how many seats do you have in Lehman Center right now, in terms for the public, considering what you show? Exactly, precisely twenty one seventy six. Okay. Because we took some seats to add uh, seats for, you know, we had to be ADA compliant, so we had to add some some seats for wheelchairs and things like that. So we were 2,300 and we down to 2,176 seats and counting. It's a lot sure, of No, I, I can imagine, but I, I imagine that opening night must have been a real blast. It's my understanding that of all persons that you had in the opening night, uh, you spoke before and then Andy Montañez came aboard. When you started speaking at the opening, uh, were you feeling a little bit of butterflies because it was so long and how long it took to open and stuff like that? And to see the amount of people there, it must have given you a great feeling, obviously. You know, for me, it was extremely moving experience because sitting at home at a computer every day, I never thought that I would witness the moment when I will be standing in front of my audience and greeting them back. So for me, it was like a dream came true. 
and such a moving experience to greet my audience. And my audience, as you know, in the Bronx, we are like family, you know. Yes. We all very much supporting the artists that we bring in and we love to socialize during the intermission and after and before. You know, I love to talk to my patrons. Uh, I'm a very hands-on executive director, you know. And that's a good thing. Yeah, I love to say hi to everybody. I treat them like my family almost, you know. It's my performing arts family. And um, it was fantastic. It was really fantastic. And people were so be well behaved because we had to put all those mandates, you know. Sure. Like, uh, vaccination mandate. Vaccination van mandate. So... My college was very nervous that people won't behave and will take masks off and they will object, you know, to being checked for vaccinations. But I told my college, you know, my audience will do whatever it takes, you know, to see live performances. They're very dedicated to their artists. And we had no incidences whatsoever. Everybody behaved perfectly. That's great stuff. That's great stuff. Especially, that's that's great because it seemed that they came yeah. to enjoy the music, to have that feeling that uh, the Lehman Center of the Performing Arts have always given them, and, and and the type of act that they brought. How was it when Andy Montañez came came out? Well, it was fantastic because you know Andy is up there. I mean, he's one of the oldest salseros alive. Yes. And this is like always amazing to me. I mean, I'm getting up with age, you know, but these people are like really up in age and they're performing, they're vibrant. I mean, they're dancing, they're jumping. It's in their genes or something because they come alive in front of the audience, you know. And of course, well, you know, that legend. salsa music, get the best of them. The salsa music kind of get them moving and stuff like that and see and act like Andy Montagnier. I know. Look at Eddie Palmieri, the same. Wow. You know, these old salseros are unbelievable. I can't. Well, you know, I remember B.B. King, you know, also. He came mm -hmm. to Lehman. Yes. And another genius, you know. So, so these old timers really you know are dedicated to the last breath you know what i'm saying they're so no matter, but the last interview that we did with you bb king came the, the week after and he yeah. he packed the plate and he brought his famous guitar lucille and he, he was good especially he was when fantastic. he sang that song the thrill is gone i mean the public just went wild when when bb king did I that know. but you know getting back to and and montanez he started with grand combo many years ago in in puerto rico and then he went out on his own and he really have, uh, have done well for himself, have done very, very well. Who else was on the card along with Andy? Uh, well, I don't, I don't remember really <laughs> because I'm moving yeah, on, I, but you probably remember yeah. more than I do because I was so overwhelmed with passion and joy. Um, you know, I was paying attention to Andy because Andy is my big hero, you know? But I'm sure there were like fantastic groups and dances and you know all around Andy, because we always have to have a great opening act for our headliners. But I honestly, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the headliners were because I was focused on Andy so much. Yeah. Andy and yeah, I, I go I think, way back. You I know, think Padilla was back. on and someone else because uh, yeah. two of my cousins went and they told me the right. flavor. The flavor in the center, it was booming. I mean, just like you said, well behaved, but they had a great time with the music, great salsa that went back way back and some of the new stuff that Andy had and stuff like that. that that's great. I mean, the, the, the place came alive. It really, truly came alive. And that's a that's Really, a and you know, we a little bit overdid it because we did like five performances in October. We one next right after another you know we had tito nieves we had a bunch of other concerts going on so it was like a very very busy time and we continuing you know we having we're going to bring jose feliciano november 27 yeah and el torito who's a big star and then we're bringing some christmas 
styled, you know, Latino styled concerts as well. And then in the new season, we do a lot of cultural events. We're going to bring, I want to bring attention to something. This year, we were fortunate that the Westchester Ballet came to us, you know, mm. because they were looking for a new venue. And they're going to so, be on too. Right. They're going to, this is going to be our first collaboration with Westchester Ballet. And I'm like keeping my fingers crossed that they're going to be in residence at Lehman Center. Because as you know, Lehman Center is not very far from Westchester. No, not at all. Not at all. Very close. And once the audience from Westchester discovers Lehman Center, they will be, they're going to become regulars, you know, because it's such a fantastic center. Nobody really knows about it. We, You and I have to talk about it to bring attention to it, you know, in the media. But it's still the best kept secret. You know, it's a beautiful center and they're doing Nutcracker performance, which was extremely brave of their president and their board, because as you know, we are in the middle of pandemic. Yes. So I was talking to the president of the Westchester Ballet. Are we going to be brave enough to do? Because you're looking at 100 children participating. Yes. Yes, yes, this is a, this is a large uh, uh, amount of people. And not only that, they're going to get great exposure thanks to Lehman Center. Because, I mean, most of the stuff they do is in Westchester. And by coming down to the Bronx, hey, that's great exposure because Lehman uh, Center for Performing Arts has a great record. And, and people like to go to the shows that you put on. You know, so they're going to get great exposure there. Yeah, we did not crack it by the Moscow Ballet, you know, Nasha Ballet mm -hmm. of Russia. But I thought this would be best to showcase a local company, you know, put put my effort into giving an opportunity to such a fantastic company nearby. So I'm very excited about this performance. And, you know, the tickets are very reasonable. And it's a beautiful performance. I mean, they put so much effort into it. They rehearse, the children are going crazy. They're so excited that they can be in front of live audience, the parents. You know, it's a huge machinery to put- It's gonna be a great exposure. It's gonna be a great exposure. And a great opportunity that you're giving them for that exposure too. That's That goes without saying, no question about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, one so of the things that I always really... love, in, 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 what I always love is, is the mix you, how you mix the performance, you bring in soul, you bring in salsa, and now I see that you, you, you bring in a lot of merengue. Like, I think El Torito is going to be on, if my memory serves me right. Uh, Feliciano is going to be on November 27th, and El Torito is going to be on the 20th. You know, he comes from a great back, a musical background. He used to be with a great band named a Toro Band in the Dominican Republic. And he left the man without on his own. Not only does he sing merengue, but he's a great bachatero and a great, great, fantastic singer. I can assure you, the 20th, you're going to have a large audience because El Torito, he has a tremendous following and he he he, he will boogie, as they say in the Bronx. He, he, he's a good one. He's a good one. That's that's a good one that you bring. Well, we had you know. El Torito before and he he is fantastic. I mean, the audience goes wild. They have such a good time. They're dancing in their seats and they're singing with him. You know, it's it's another one of those performers that is well known and has been around the block. You know what I'm saying? Someone that is well established and uh, has been dedicated to his craft for many years. So I'm very, very proud to bring him. But I also love Jose Feliciano. Jose Feliciano and I go back to 1975. Wow. My wow. first job, my first job straight out of school, well, kindergarten, was, <laughs> was to run a performing art center in Canada. Okay. I was very young and I went to the, it was like a big concert hall like Lehman. And I went to the president of the college because that concert hall was mainly used for basketball games. 
-hmm. And I thought it was such a waste, you know. So I went to the president of the college and I said, I'm going to start a performing art series at this concert hall. Mm -hmm. And my president of the college said, okay, just don't come for, for any money from me because I have none. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you could make it famous and you could make it on your own, go for it. So I brought Jose Feliciano for the first time to Canada to that concert hall. And, you know, he was so grateful that he got a Canadian debut that he stayed in touch with me since that time. And wow. also, you know, he was the first performer. I gave the first performance in Canada to Dizzy Gillespie. Great jazz player. Concert. Great jazz no player. Kidding. No kidding. So these two performers became like my lifetime friends. Every time I went, you know, to do a job somewhere, because, you know, I've been running a lot of performing arts centers in my lifetime. Jose Feliciano was always on, and so was Dizzy. Two great, two great performers. I, I, two I great want performers. to tell you a funny story about Dizzy. So I was running a, an opera house in Chicago, and we wanted to do a benefit for the opera house. So I called Dizzy, and I said, Dizzy, could you come and do a benefit concert for me? And he said, well, I'm in South Africa right now, but I'm coming from South Africa on such and such a date. I'll be in Chicago for you. Wow. But he comes oh, wow. with this big turban, you know, beautiful mm -hmm. clothing from South Africa. People look at him like, who is this person? You know, some people, of course, recognize him. And, you know, mm -hmm. he got on the phone and put an orchestra together within half an hour. Within wow. half an hour, he wow. had a band, the best players in Chicago. Oh, my God, what a concert. They took the roof of that opera house. I can imagine. For Dizzy oh Gillespie was a great one. He was oh a great one. Oh my God. I'm for, he was I a wish we did the recording of that concert because it was, it was one of the best concerts he ever did. And it was a band he put in half an hour. Wow. Of wow. The, wow. You know, well, he has that music. aura. He has that aura. A lot of guys have oh. follow him. A lot of guys want to play he with him amazing. for years and stuff like that. No, no, yeah. he was a good one. He was a good one. And the other good one so, that you mentioned is Jose Feliciano. I had the, the yeah. opportunity to work with him uh, when he went to Banco Popular for a couple of concerts and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, in December, the bank always used him. Great guy, tremendous musician. Once he grabbed that guitar and get going, very amazing. And I think you're going to have him on the 27th of November. If my memory serves, right. that's going to be something. That will be something. Right celebrating you know. holidays you know we're killing two birds with one stone thanksgiving and christmas <laughs> Come it's here. right there then right after that you're going to have the, the paranda navideña that 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 will be something also the paranda navideña that goes on every year yeah. and and, right. and i think you're going to have a big draw on that that's 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 a puerto rican following like you won't believe that will be packed and that's i a matter of fact i've seen la paranda navideña twice at Lehman years ago, so I know it's that's that's going to be packed. That's really going to be packed. Uh, no question about <laughs> I it. I love you because you say everything is going to be packed. I love you for that. <laughs> no, but that, that that that's a good thing because you have a drawing. See, what, what, one of the key chem chemistry that that you have is your experience and your knowledge, and you know how to how to mix it. You follow what I'm saying? I I I, I over the years since I've known you, I see the way how you mix it. With the different guys and myself and i'm quite sure over a period of time you probably might have some hip-hop i am not great at hip-hop but my kids are love it so you <laughs> know no thing. we're doing hip-hop in the spring we're adding hip-hop as a matter of fact i'm meeting with a producer this afternoon because we want okay. to dedicate to our he doesn't know it yet but we want to dedicate that concert to our uh borough president you know yeah okay that that we that will that should be that that will have a drawing also. I I think it will. You because know, he, he was he, like the older president, not the one that is coming now. The borough president. Oh, okay. you know. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Previous that, one, that should be a good one. But, but another guy that you, you're you going to have in December is El Canario. Uh, I think El Canario yeah. is going to be there also. He has a, a good track record also. He's been around for a long time. Very, very good singer. Very stylish. Very smooth. Great dance also. Having him on board will do a lot also for the center because he has a large following and he's a good one. Yeah. He's a good one. Also. I love the way yeah. he, he whistles. Did you hear him whistle? Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, that's why they call him El Canario. That's a that's a bird in Spanish. So he imitates that bird. That's why they call him El Canario. He's, he's very famous for whistling tunes. Yes. I mean, he's, he's very talented guy. I'm very charming. He's very approachable, you know, and loves the audience. I yeah. would call I had him. A, I, you know, I had the opportunity to meet him uh, many years ago. Very nice guy. Uh, very respectful. Uh, I met him right after Celia Cruz died. And he was very hurt because, as a matter of fact, both of them lived out in Jersey. And at that time, he was going through a very painful situation. But great, great guy, um, very humble, very humble, great singer. And once he get into that that type of thing, then he he can draw an audience. He, he's a good one. He's unstoppable. He's, one. he's such a showman. He's unbelievable showman. You know, he's like uh, the Rat Pack of, of Puerto Rico, you know, we just need two more singers with him and we would have the Rat Pack of Puerto Rico. Oh, yes. You, see, you, you, know? you certainly yeah. would. But is there a lot of lot more Dominican uh, salsa and um, merengue guys that are you going to be bringing or that's down the road next year? You know, we're trying to mix them because my philosophy is to provide uh, entertainment, you know, for our audience. So yes. our audience is Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know, and the rest of it is every nationality you can think of. So I'm bringing the Polish Symphony Orchestra. I'm bringing mm. Irish mm. Dance Company. I'm, 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 I'm trying to, like, cover... I'm bringing Japanese drummers, you know, I'm bringing tribute to Prince. I'm bringing a lot of variety. I try to add variety to get, to cover as many different diverse audiences that we have in the Bronx. So of you intend to do a tribute about Prince also? You intend to do a tribute on Prince? We're doing a tribute to the Prince, but it's very authentic. It's this guy that does Prince, People mm -hmm. forget it's Prince. It's not Prince. He acts, wow. sings, just like Prince. We had wow. him before, and the audience went wild. They were asking, when are you bringing him back? Well, we did a tribute to Michael Jackson many years ago, and we also picked like the best tribute because there were little girls running, oh, Michael, Michael, Michael. They believe this was Michael Jackson. It was like scary, you know, they, they, because he looked just like him. I mean, it was unreal, you know, so this guy looks and acts like Prince. He's such a close double to him. It's, it's, it's going you know, to be I, I, as you, as you, as you mentioned that about Prince and Michael Jackson, it just make my memory run that we have lost a couple of good ones. We have lost Dizzy Gillespie. Michael yeah. uh, and also yeah. Prince, but the memory goes on. What they left yeah. behind in terms of music, their legacy will continue yeah. forever and ever and ever because they were yeah. good at what they did, no question about it. And, 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 and when you do when you do these type of things, it's good for the youngsters, you know, it, it, for them to see yeah. and, and and because they they heard their, their mom and dad playing these records and stuff like that. So that's good stuff. That's very 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 good stuff. And I, and I like it. That's why I'm going to start a program. Yeah. You know, we're bringing another legend in the spring. We're going to bring Stephanie Mills. So Very good. Another yes. legend, you know. So we're trying to do as much variety as we possibly can to keep it interesting oh. for our patrons. Well, I think, you, I, I think you're doing an excellent job. I, I mean, uh, bringing uh, Stephanie Mills. Um, she used to be on Broadway. Then she became a singer. Uh, before um, Teddy Pendergrass died, they did a couple of duets. Great singer, great dancer, very talented young lady. She's a matter of fact, she's a New Yorker. She's, I think, if my memory serves me right, right, she's from Westchester County. Very, very good to have her aboard. Well, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the family at Grapevine to wish you great success, 
and to thank you for giving us the opportunity again to work with you. We love what you do. You're great at what you do. And make no mistake about that. You have put the Lehman Center for the Heart on the map. Your creativity and knowledge and know when to mix has made such a great, great impact in the Bronx and all over New York to those who know Lehman Center. We don't have words to thank you for once again to be a special guest and continue moving on. You do a fantastic job and we love working with you. No question about that. Thank you so much. It means so much to me, especially after the pandemic. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. But again, because your skill, you were able to know where to go to get the funds and to get help. <laughs> and we got to thank Schumer and also thank you for bringing back the center. No question about it. And we look forward to working with you again down the road. That's for sure. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you so much. And again, this is Warren Ford Lee saying goodnight for the Queen's Great Vine. And we hope to see you next week at the same time in the same place. And we want to thank our special guests for being our guests. And again, thank you so much and good night.